This is FAIR TV. I'm Janine Jackson. We learned on Monday that PBS has something new for viewers, more Charlie Rose. The new Friday night show, Charlie Rose Weekend, will consist mainly of clips from interviews from the week. If you think PBS could do better, we're not going to disagree. But the same day, in the pages of The New Yorker, there was more bad news for PBS. A new documentary called Citizen Coke was set to air nationally, thanks to an arrangement with the Independent Television Service, or ITVS. But last November, a documentary called Park Avenue did air on PBS, and it included some criticism of David Koch, one of the famous billionaire right-wing donors. And David Koch just happens to be a big donor to public TV flagship stations, WNET and WGBH. As The New Yorker's Jane Mayer reports, the inclusion of Koch in that film didn't sit well with WNET's management, and they started putting pressure on ITVS about what might be in this new film, Citizen Koch. ITVS, in turn, started pressuring the filmmakers and, well, you might not be surprised to hear that Citizen Koch will not be airing on PBS. In the course of these conversations, one ITVS vice president told the filmmakers, we live in a world where we have to be aware that people with power have power. Of course, journalism, particularly public broadcasting, exists to challenge and speak up to that power, which is maybe why those powerful people shouldn't hold the purse strings. A May 17th New York Times article detailed the long history of U.S. support for Guatemalan dictator Efrain Rios Montt, recently convicted in Guatemalan courts for genocide and crimes against humanity, although that conviction was subsequently overturned. The Reagan administration embraced Rios Montt from his installation in a 1982 coup. Reagan called the man who oversaw the deaths of more than 200,000 indigenous people, a man of great personal integrity who got a bum rap. And Reagan administration officials like Elliot Abrams brushed off concerns about atrocities. Times reporter Elizabeth Malkin noted that the U.S. role wasn't a big factor in the Rios Montt trial. It wasn't a big factor in media coverage either, what coverage there was, that is. A search of the Nexus database showed that the broadcast networks ABC, CBS, and NBC never made a reference to the Rio Smolt trial, which was the first time that a country has been able to use its own courts to convict a former head of state for genocide. Even the Washington Post ignored the trial, and then two days after the conviction ran a 73-word item buried deep in the digest section that called the conviction an historic moment. Historic, but somehow not worth covering. And finally, our ears perked up a bit watching Meet the Press host David Gregory talk about one of his guests. We come back, we're going to continue the theme of accountability. I have a special visitor here, and that is Don Rumsfeld, former Secretary of Defense, talking about Rumsfeld's rules. Well, there's no question that Donald Rumsfeld might have quite a lot to account for, but that's not the way it went. David Gregory's first question was, well, this. Mr. Secretary, welcome back. You have such an interesting distinction here because I remember President Bush, who I covered, called you a matinee idol, and now you're soon to be a great-grandfather. That's a pretty good Think combination. <laughs> <laughs> it's exciting. Well, okay. They did eventually get to the issue of accountability for the Obama administration. Yes, that was the point of having Donald Rumsfeld on the show. So if you wanted to know what Rumsfeld thought about the IRS Tea Party story or Benghazi, well, Meet the Press had you covered. Gregory did mention something about trust issues during the Bush years, but only to ask how it compared to the current administration. People used to say the media treat Donald Rumsfeld like a rock star. Seems like some things don't change. I'm Janine Jackson. This is Fair TV.